Hi, I'm Evelyn Porter Brown. I'm here today to talk about the history of the Mount Trout Missionary Baptist Church. It was organized in 1895. When it was organized, and that was under the leadership of Reverend G. R. G. Gibson. And during that time, we have had more pastors here. We had Reverend H. H. Harris was here. And during that time, the trustees was Deacon Henry Tate. They purchased some land from Lafayette Johnson and his wife, Maddie Johnson, an acre of land, and they built the first church. This church was built in 1997. The church that we're in now was built in 1997 under the leadership of uh, Reverend Wilma Padgett. He's our, one of our late pastors also. And when I became a member here, it been a long time and I used to love to come to Sunday school. Our teacher was Sister Amanda Leatherwood. She would take us to the front of the church and the elders would be in, the, in here. And we would have Sunday school. She would teach us Bible lesson verses. She would teach us about the Lord's Prayer. And I was anxious to get to Sunday school because it was so good. My brother Fred and his wife used to pick me and my siblings up and bring us to church. In September, every fourth Sunday in September, we would have what they call big meeting. Now it's homecoming, but it was a big meeting. We would, the members would bring their food in boxes, sit outside on benches in the church. They would have collard greens, fried chicken, mac and cheese, potato salad, cornbread, and all that good food. And they would serve food on the grounds. It would be called dinner on the grounds. And immediately following uh, homecoming, the week after homecoming, we would have revival five nights a week and we would have a good time. We would call what they have called the morning bench and if you wouldn't join the church you would sit on the morning bench and you would sit there until you get the Holy Ghost. You would sit there until you get Jesus and we would have a good time at revivals. Back in uh, 1955 that year I started living with my grandmother and uh, she used to tell me about the history of different things. And back in those days, uh, they were farming it all, and uh, her daddy and her husband would be working. And they all, the, the women would come to church on Sunday. And it'd be a dirt road you had to travel. And the long way around, the better way around, it was about, uh, eight or ten miles. Then the short distance were around about six miles, but they had to cross the creek. And they used use a boat to cross the creek with. And they used to say, where y'all going to church at today? They didn't used to call it Mount Trump. They said, out on the hill. We, everybody know what out on the hill was. And uh, then they uh, come to the creek, and they come on crossing, and the the men and the other people who would go back home and rest. Some of them didn't rest, but some of them went on and worked. But the men didn't hardly want to come to church. So when the thing changed around, so when the men wanted to come to church, the men got together and said, we're not going to be walking. So they started riding the mule and the buggy and came to church. And they came all the way out on the hill out here. And when they came into church, they'd be humming coming into church, clapping and humming. Wasn't no music, but they'd be humming. And uh, my grandma said, got back home, and her husband said, you felt good today. He said, yeah, I felt good today. Well, you felt better today than you were out there in the sun. Yeah, yeah, because I was talking to the Lord. And, and he said, what about the Lord? She said, I feel good about the Lord. The Spirit touched me today. And they would get in the field and go to humming, singing, carrying on, you know, and hot and all and they leave and go home and relax and cook and all. And then later on, uh, my mother used to tell me too, I used to go home to my mother. She said, well, there's a church right down the road there too. So we need to go to that church. It was close in the neighborhood. So all of them went to their church. And my uncle, my great, great uncle, my grandmama brother was scared of bad weather. And every time it would come up a bad storm, he would go to the church, the little green church. And uh, so that particular time, it come up a storm, and he went to the church, and it would be the old type wooden windows. You had to let it up and put a prop on it for it to stay up. So it come up a bad cloud, and the rain and the thunder so bad, so he didn't put the prop on it. 
and he, he throw the stuff inside the chuck, and he went to go in the chuck, and the window fell across his back. And he stayed out in the rain on it, this part all night long. So my grandmama said, she got him, said, hmm, my brother hanging out the church. And so they went over there and got him out. And when he did that, he was so tired and wild, he fell over in the church. And then on, he respect what God did. He started going to church. Didn't have to wait till the bad weather come up. He went to church all the time right along with them. They didn't have to beg him to go to church. Hi, I'm Elijah Porter. Uh, I'm, I'm a member here at Mount Trump Baptist Church. I became a member here when I was a little boy. Uh, me and my, my sibling sister Evelyn, and my sister Rosie, and my sister Mamie, we all became, uh, came, here, came to church here with my brother Fred and his wife Carrie. My mom was a member of another church, and, and, and so this church was right close in the community and she wanted us to go to church. So she told my brother Fred, he was, a, he was a deacon at this church at the time. He was a deacon here. So she asked Fred to come and pick us up and, and bring us to church because she wanted us to go to church on Sunday, make sure that we had somebody to go to church. And so Fred and Carrie would come every Sunday and uh, come on Sunday when there was church going on here, they would come and pick us up and take us to church. And, and uh, just like we were their kids. And we, we, we came here to Mount Triumph. Uh, and then we, we, uh, we was on the morning bench when we had revival here. We, we, uh, we was on the morning bench and we all joined church that week. Uh, and became members of Mount Triumph. Where the, uh, the Reverend Clyde Cameron was, was pastor here at that time. And we was baptized at the creek, up at the creek on a Sunday morning before church. Uh, they, they got together and we had baptism at the creek and then came on back to the church and, and uh, where we gave our right hands of fellowship and became members here at this church. And we would have a Sunday school and, 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 and I really liked Sunday school. We had, we had uh, Deacon, the, that, uh, the, the man, the, the people that was deacons here there at the time, Deacon Silas Leatherwood and his wife, uh, Sister Manda Leatherwood. They live right across the road over here off, on the other side of 59. They had property back there and they live here and they was, he was deacon and, and his wife here. She was a school teacher, if I'm correct. So she was real smart, so she taught us the, kid, the small kids Sunday school. We would go to the front corner of the church and the, and, the, and the grown people, the, 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 past, the all the members, they would have church up on, have Sunday school on this end. And she would teach us Sunday school back there. And, and we had to get up and read. And, and I liked that, get up and read and try to read as, and, you know, as loud and, and read and, and, and get your words right. So I really looked forward to coming to Sunday school, Fred coming to, and Carrie coming to pick us up and bringing us to church. I am Reverend Joe L. Dees, the pastor of St. Joe Missionary Baptist Church. I'm the associate pastor of this church, Mount Tom Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Robert Brown Sr. is the only shepherd here. And we work together as a team. He's the head and I'm his co-leader of this church. And we have a quorum of four deacons Chairman Deacon Fred Porter, Co-Chairman Deacon Elijah Porter, and Deacon John Porter, and Deacon Dan Williams work out of the pastor's office. As far back as I can rem reminisce, this church was pastored by the Reverend Clyde Campbell. And at that time, this church probably was filled with more spiritual biker than in the church in Little River, black church in Little River at that time. I believe he pastored for some 24 years and most of the members my age, a little younger and old, all older, were accepted Christ on his leadership. The chairman of the deacon board, Deacon Fred Porter, 
secretary of the church, the financial secretary, Sister Annie German, the secretary of the church, Sister Evelyn Brown, and the church sponsored a lot of singing events, quartet singing, choir anniversaries, and so forth. And on the annual day, which is the birthday of the church, which we call homecoming, back then we called it big meeting for the simple reason that we didn't have the facilities that we have now uh, inside fellowship hall. They fixed food in boxes, sat them on the tables around the church. Each family had their own box, and visitors would come by, get them a plate, whatever kind of food they wanted. Being black, we normally catered to soul food, namely the black eyed peas, collard greens, turnip greens, butter greens, potato salad, etc., and chicken. Uh, when Clyde came, my pastor, along with three more churches at one time, I was seeing about this church and two more churches in Clark and I believe uh, Conecuh County. After his demise came the Reverend Tony Pace, I believe. He passed here for about two years, I believe, before he resigned, I believe. And after his the resignation, the church call was in search, our pulpit committees, went in search for a pastor and had different men to come in and on a trial basis to preach to the congregation. The church voted and selected Reverend Wilma Paget to be its pastor on whose leadership this present sanctuary was built under. He pastored for 20 years, I believe, and coming down to his demise of his health, he had one of his feet amputated but he was still preach. He had a prosthetic leg. He knowing that his health was waning in a conference here, he selected Pastor Robert Brown to be the pastor of the Mount Trump Baptist Church that he was stepping down. Well, he, Pastor Brown got the majority of the vote, which I gave him my vote. There were some members who said they didn't vote for him, but they felt that he didn't have the seasoning. Well, maybe he didn't then, but he got it now. I've heard him make the statement during the revival here that he thanked the good Lord that he has me in on his on his leadership, that he has grown some. And you know, pastoring. It's a thing like shepherding over sheep. A shepherd knows his sheep. They know his voice. And as the scriptures say, a stranger they will not follow. My pastor, Reverend Robert Brown Sr., has done a stellar job as pastor. I believe he's been here as pastor around 12 years, going on 13. I've seen nowhere where he aired. Every appointment that he's called to preach, he tried to meet his commitments. And the church followed him, which is saying something about his pastorship. I don't be with him all the time because being a pastor myself, I have engagement sometimes he's called off. But as often as I can, I go and support my pastor because we are a family. And as the scripture said, the family that prays together stays together. Scripture also teaches us that in order to gain friends, we must first show ourselves friendly. Hi, I'm Robert Brown, the pastor of the Mount Trial Missionary Baptist Church here in Little River. And I just want to remember on some of the things that, about the history of the church. I remember when um, there was only one Sunday here, they only had one Sunday here. And what we would do would go around through the month every month to each church. There was like four churches in the neighborhood. And every Sunday we'd go to each other the church and visit them and they would come to this church here too. And during that time there, we used to have a good time because people would come together 
and reminisce with one another and talk about things, you know, other, other things in the community and stuff like that. And I remember, too, that how people would help one another all because by being together like that and just on one Sunday, you get to know one another better. And you get to know what's going on in the neighborhood or how your child is and stuff like that. And I remember that everybody in the neighborhood was your parent. I mean, you mess up at somebody's house, oh, you get a whooping there, and then you get a whooping when you get home. And that's the way it was in the community up here. And that's just some of the things, especially with the church. Because when I came here, like I said, when I came here, then they had went to two Sundays. And at that time, we was on the, um, the leadership of Reverend William Padgett when I joined here. We was on the leadership of William Padgett. And when I came here, we went to two Sundays then. And then the two Sundays, we would have like um, second Sunday and fourth Sunday. We'll have service here. And then on the early Sundays, we would go to early church and still visit them. And it was just a wonderful time the way things were going back then and everything. I also remember when I first got baptized, I was about between 10 or 12. We did it at the Little River Creek. We was going to the creek then and we got baptized and then we came back and got fellowship in the church. Now we got a baptism pool in the church. So we've come a long ways. And I used to be a choir member. I remember singing in the choir. And now I remember being an usher also. So it's been, it's some lot of memories here, but you just have to think about them. But we've come, the Lord brought us a long way. So he brought us from outside toilets into inside facilities in the church. You know, we got everything right where we need it, you know, if we want something and all by the grace of God. In the history of this church, I used to go hunting on Sunday, you know, bad about going hunting on Sunday. So my pastor Robert Brown, the first lady, would be at the store down here, and I'd be talking to him, and uh, I wasn't thinking about coming to church. I'd be going hunting, go hunting, and uh, be talking. I got out and got to thinking, you know. I said, well, I said, you know what, man? I said, I'm going to church. So I didn't have no, what's called, kind of clothes they were wearing then, but I found something come on the church. So I came on the church, and the people got up in the church, so having so much a good time. I said, what's wrong with them people? I said, they're having a good time up in the church. Dude. I didn't know about no good time back then, you know, people singing, carrying on. So I came in the church, and when you do something like that, always be on time, because you don't want nobody looking at you coming in the church. You be in the church where the, when the one of the won't see you. So I come on in the church and come in the church and I sit down on the second pier, the second Sunday. I sit there and sit there, and uh, church over with, and I went back home. I said, hmm, they had a good time today. So I came back to full sun, ranked on, ranked on, and started talking to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, I said, I need to change because I was a DJ. When I was making money then, God wasn't hipping me. It was my money. I wasn't giving him no respect, you know. So I came on to church and ranked on in about, about a month or two months, and Deacon Fred Potter. I said, Deacon, I said, guess what? I said, I'm going to help you today. He said, you going to help me today? I said, yes, I'm going to help you today. No, during, the, uh, during the devotion. So there were two more ladies helping him. And then one of them said, his sister said, hmm, take my place. So I come up and start helping him in the church there, you know. And uh, so we having a, having a good time. Then when I became a deacon, and uh, they got me be a deacon, and they getting the people up there. You see, was I ready for a deacon, though? And a lot of them come and say, I thought you already were a deacon. You've been working there where you go. I said, no, I've been talking to the Lord. Am I ready for this job? So the pastor asked me, are you ready? I said, yeah, I'm ready. So we come on and I joined church and they asked me that I've been baptized. And I can't remember. I thought I would, but I didn't. I asked some older people, said, no, you ain't never been baptized. So they baptized me. And then uh, after they baptized me, I come on, start doing all I can work for the work. And I never forget this particular time we were having a, a big meeting around here. There's some preacher from out of town, so I don't know where Mobile, Pensacola, or up there preaching. And he got through, he said, Pastor, you need to get something to preach on around here. Because, you know, it wasn't that very loud. So you need to get something. And I heard him what he said. When he got through uh, saying that, and me and the pastor talking, I said, Pastor, I said, I'm going to surprise you. He said, surprise, all I said, I'm going to surprise you. So I went on to Monroe the Music Center and put your PA system and brought it and installed it in the church. 
and he got to preaching on him. And his mother said, wow, he sounds so good today. She really didn't know what, what kind of PA system he had. He was sounding so good. He was, he was preaching on him, boy. He was just preaching. And uh, some of them said, he need to come down on a little bit. You know, he, he the Holy Ghost, he'd get louder and louder and louder, you know. So we did. We, we worked on that. And later on, we got to talking about the sanctuary, you know, because we had nothing but the blocks up here. And uh, we got to talk. I said, Pastor, we need to do something out of the sanctuary. We kept talking, kept talking. It took over about a year, you know. So one day, he walked on outside. I said, Pastor, what are we going to do? It? He stopped. He said, Deep, when you get ready. So me and Deacon Porter, Fred went to Atmo and started getting the stuff for the church. We brought it on back. And me and another guy, we did the sanctuary. We did the whole sanctuary. We worked 72 hours. We started on Monday, and we worked from 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock that night. Tuesday, we did the same thing. Wednesday, we worked about 6. And we come in Thursday, we started cleaning up. We did the whole sanctuary in 72 hours in the part of the church. And later on, I'll never forget this. Two of the sisters, one of them here today, they got the shot and the Holy Ghost hit them. And uh, they got the rock of the bench, you know. And the pastor said, somebody's going to get hurt in this church. And uh, he said, Deep, so we need to do some of these things we're sitting on. So what I did, I said, Pastor, I got a way of doing it. He said, well, how are we going to do it? I said, I'm going to anchor them to the floor. So I took my grandson. We come up in one night, and we anchor them to the floor. We won't turn over nobody. Then later on, the pastor, I got to looking around. I said, well, we need some more improvement in the church. I'm a Put a good carpenter. And so I told Pastor, I'm going to build you something you can preach on. You like to beat, beat. I said, I'm going to fix you something that ain't going to be here forever. So I built the porch for him. And the table and all the different stuff. Got it straightened out. Then later on, I had another guy working on the baptism pool in the back. And uh, he didn't complete the job. So me and a friend of mine, we came down and sent the baptism pool in the back. Then we... Later on, we went back and we put new tiles on the floor back down here. And uh, it got it looking good. And go on back a little bit more. So, young guy come out down the road. That should be how kids pay and, uh, things attention. The little boy come in and said, Mama, wow. He said, what you talking about? Wow. He was looking around. It's awesome in here, ain't it? It's awesome. And the pastor heard him. Then later on, had another preacher to come up. He started to preach him. And I was told the PA assistant out the door. He said, give me that, put it in my truck. And the pastor stopped, said, what you talking about? You watching, you go and put it in your vehicle. Don't let him take it with him, you know. And so me and the pastor, we get along good. Anything he brings up to help the church, I'm 100% with him. Just like I told them all, I come to Mount Trump not to be a bench member. I come to work, and I like working for the Lord. And one thing about it, I talked to the Lord at night, and I had a, a thing one time. I go, so the Lord touched my heart to sing a little bit. So I first started off with a little old hymn, Amazing Grace. So I started singing it, and I thought, I think I got the music pretty good. And that was on a Saturday night. I sit and watch the football game to about 11 o'clock. Then I thought I'd go to bed. I said, I was going to do it the fourth Sunday. I thought I thought I'd go to bed. I laid down there. 12 o'clock, I couldn't go to sleep. 12.30, I wasn't asleep. I said, Lord, I got to go to church tomorrow. 1 o'clock, I couldn't go to sleep. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just do it tomorrow. When I realized it was time for me to get up to go to church. The Lord want me to do it then. Don't delay it on him. Do it on time. So anytime you do something for the Lord, do it on time and mean it. Because one thing about him, he's never late for you. Don't be late for him. Like I say, I was a member here as a child, as a child, and I stayed a member here until uh, uh, the 70s. And I, I left here and, and went to Detroit uh, when I was about, uh, about 21, about 22, somewhere like that. I left and went to Detroit in 77. And I came back in 79, and I rejoined 
back here. I, well, I had, I still was a member here. They had never, I came on back to church, came on back and, 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 and started going back to church. And I became a, a deacon here. I, I married, got married in 82, 1982. And then I became a deacon here at this church when I, at a young age, under the leadership of Reverend Clyde Cameron. And, and at that time, I was a young deacon here and, and, and started to go, you know, go to other churches and, and revival, do revivals. And I wasn't used to that, you know, and I'd be a little sk skittish when you had to get up and go and pray at other churches. But I, I did, you know, my, I, I did my job. I, I'd go and we'd, we'd be in revival at other churches. We'd go to homecomings, like I said, other churches or uh, whatever was going on. We would, uh, we would, we would go in. And, and show and go in and, and represent for Mount Trump. And, and so I, uh, like I say, by me being a deacon here, so uh, Reverend Clyde Cameron, he, he, he passed on. He was, like I say, he, he deceased while I was a deacon. And so we, uh, so, so we, we moved on. We had the Reverend Tony Pace came and we, 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 we called him as pastor. And, but he didn't stay long, but he was here for a couple of years. And I was deacon under his leadership. And then after him, Rev, uh, Reverend Tony Pace uh, uh, became our pastor. And uh, we, he was our pastor for a good while. And like I say, I was the deacon, I was a deacon under, under his leadership. And uh, we was in the old, what we call the old building, older building. We had a building here that was built in 1946, if I'm correct. And so we was, as deacon here, young deacon here, we was uh, in that old building. And, and when people we'd have, we'd have stuff going on that we didn't have air condition. And I was kind of embarrassed. And I prayed to God to help us, you know, get us, get a, you know, you know get, us, get us a nice building for us to tide, the people to come and tide so that we can get a, a better building and all. And so God, so I prayed and I prayed and I'm serious. I prayed to God. God blessed me. He started it off by blessing me to get a good job. I married in 82 and 83, I got a job. I came back home, let me bag it up. I came back home to my mom and my dad and I felt like they needed me. And I, and I was young, I came home, back, came back home to them. And so I was staying, stayed with them. Then I got married while I was there in 82 and I was there overseeing, seeing my mom and dad taking care of them. And uh, so God, I prayed to God about the church, about us getting a, a, new, a, a better building and all. And, uh, and so in 83, he, he, I got a good job. I got a job at Scott Paper Company. And, and so he, he blessed me to get that job at Scott Paper Company in 83. And, 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 and so in, in, uh, and that was in October 83. In 84, I was working at this wood yard down here. That's how God had blessed me. They had Scott, you know, uh, Kimberly Clark with Scott at the time. They put in wood yard. So I worked out of Monroe for a year. And by the next year, that they was putting this wood yard in. And I had prayed about that job. So I asked my boss lady and she said, I said, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna bid on that job. She said, okay, yeah, I'll put in a good word for you. I don't know if you'll get it. I got the job. They, by me living right here, they give me that job on that wood yard. I started operating over here, crane and loading trucks. And I worked there and, 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 and I prayed to God for us to get us a, a, a nicer building. And God, he fixed things. We went to the bank, man, as, as a deacon trustee, me and uh, uh, my, my first lady Evelyn, my sister Rosie, uh, Reverend Robert Brown, he, which he was a deacon here at the time. He became a deacon. He became my brother-in-law and a deacon here at the time. And so we all went to Monroe. I went up there and the guy told me, said, bring the trustees. Bring to, see, uh, he was a young guy, about 26. He said, yeah, I'll help y'all. said, I'll come back through it. I'll come through there. I'll see that church. Say, I'll help y'all. And he hoped that we got some money, and that's when I was the overseer of building this building. And we built this, we, me, and, me, and, me and Deacon Robert Brown, and, and I feel like I said, what we got to do, we got to tie this old building down in order for us to get started with, with something else. We got we to get this, we got this. So me and Robert came out here, and we started tearing that old building down. We come out here and put ladders on top of it, tow the tin off, and we can get down in there, and we tow this building down to the ground. And, 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 and then we, started when then we we had fellowship and we had an addition we had added on to the old building and we we started had we had, we moved the bench and stuff back in there and started having church but I mean, reverend tony pace was pastor
and we had church out of that building while we started construction. This old building it was under construction. This building was under construction. And I was, like I say, I was the overseer of the job. The, the guy, so we had a guy that was a bricklayer that was right around in this community that, that a lot of people knew. And he came in and, uh, and built this building. And I, and I was the overseer right here with the me and Robert Brown. We was the overseer and we came, was right here and made sure that thing was done right. And uh, so we built this building and God blessed us and he blessed us with with, to get pews and he, you know, he just kept on, he's still blessing us right now. And uh, he, he just, God is, God is awesome. And I'm gonna tell you some things he, that in, in 83 that he, when I got the job at Kim of the Clock, I was out there in the woods, I, I got to put this part in, I was out there in the woods that evening. And uh, when I got the first day on that job and I was out there and I was, I, I was a topping man, I was topping trees, man, the guy that was cutting out, he's cutting the tree with a, a cutter. And so he was way over there. So I, was, I said, down, I said, Lord, I said, I know you did it for me. I said, I, I'm not doubting you. I said, but if you just showed me a sign, when I said that, the moon say, just like that. I said, but I just started crying. And so, you know, I know God in the part of my sin, and I know he's real. And, and, uh, and so all you got to do is ask him and be sincere and, and ask him and, and, and for anything that you want. And God, will get, he'll fix it for you. So, uh, uh, so it's a... The history here is is, is is an awesome history, and uh, and it's it's, it's uh, you know it's been it's been great, and you know we we, we know that uh, one day we have to leave here. And we know we just passing through, but but the journey has been been great for me. It's it's been great. Way back then, we also didn't have. Uh, air conditioning, we come to church, we used to have to use paper fans or either tear a piece of paper off a paper box and fan with, and then we had these wood, I mean, gas heaters and stuff, all that. We didn't have central air or central heat like we have now. And when we were singing in the choir, you know, you'd get hot and you'd fan, and you'd fan, and you'd fan until you get cool, and then sometimes when you fan, you don't get cool, but it didn't stop us from having good church. We still had good church, still had good preaching, good singing. We still had good services. And my wife, she was going here and everything, and we knew one another in the neighborhood and everything, and she used to live kind of up the road for me, and I lived kind of down the road <laughs> for me and everything. And so we got to talk to one another and got to see one and start talking and everything, and then when we began to start dating and everything, when she would go to church at that time, at that time, now, I was not in the church as much. And she would come home and they would talk about how good church was and all the things that took place in church. And then I began to wonder, well, then they're having such a good time in church, so I might be in the wrong place. I need to go to church sometime. And I began to go to church with everything and began to enjoy church. And then, as I said, the church got in me. I put it like that there. And then I joined here on the women pageant. When I joined, it was one uh, revival night. Because we used to have some awesome revival nights here. I mean, people used to tell me in the neighborhood that one of the awesome revivals used to be here at Mount Trout. And I, used to, I heard one gentleman say that when you go to Mount Trout, you better be right because the Holy Ghost is moving up in there. And I just really enjoyed it when I came here. And it was, I just didn't come just for my wife now, but I, I, I really enjoyed the service and everything. And then as time went on about, as revival, talking about... um. Homecoming. I heard him talking about homecoming. Homecoming was one of our biggest events that is here. It's homecoming and pastor anniversary. It's one of our biggest events. And during homecoming, yes, I liked the food and everything, the chicken, but I really liked the jelly cakes. Back then they had all kinds of sweet and stuff like that there. And, and like the back, back there is sometimes, it, the kitchen part wasn't as large as it is now. So everybody couldn't fit back there. Some would bring food in the boxes and put them back there. And the some would use the outside and have it in the trunk of their car. And so you had the opportunity to go around to the cars and get food from there. Opportunity to go in the kitchen and get food from there. And so there was no excuse of somebody going hungry that day. Because every time where you turn around, there was food everywhere. And it was some really good food. And, and like I said, I came out on a weird pageant. And then... 
And when I joined here, I became an usher here. And I stood at the door back then. I was ushering for a while. And then the pastor talked to me about being a deacon. And I agreed to be a deacon. And so I went on trial to be a deacon. And so it went on there, and then they ordained me as deacon here. And I became a deacon here. And I forgot, when I joined church, I joined church in 1992, when I joined church. 92, after I got married and everything, I joined church here. And then I became a deacon. Like I said, I was a usher at the door, and then I became a deacon here. And I was a deacon here for a pretty good while, deacon. And, and that's when I, uh, my brother-in-law was, Elijah was talking about building the church. We were talking about building the church. Yes, the old building that we was in, it had some leaks in it. When it rained outside, it rained inside. But that didn't stop us from having church, though. It did not stop us from coming out here. Even in the heat of the day, I mean, sun's time, in the summertime when it's so hot and everything. Like, so we had our fans. We would fan and... We had on um, us up. If you had a um, fan, you bring, plug it up. And, and, but we kept having church. Even during that time, the walls come in, bees come in. We just fanned them away and everything. But we just still had church, though. It was an awesome time. Back then, it seemed like people were really worshiping the Lord and were seeking God for something. And we still had an awesome time. Back then, we didn't have the music that we had today either. We would stomp our feet, clap our hands and everything, but we were having an awesome, good time in the Lord. But then we begin to sit down and, um, with the members and talk about building a new church with the pastor. And, and during that time of, of that, we used to talk a lot about it, but we found out one thing, talk is not going to get it. We had to do something. And so we came together and agreed to build a new church. And like my brother-in-law said, first we have to move this church out of the way in order to build another church. Because sometimes you can talk, and if you don't start moving or doing something, we'll be saying the same thing over and over. So we decided to go ahead and tear down this church, so that means that we will have to build another church. And so like I said, when we, um, after we had two this church down here, we were having church in the back. And it was a small effort back there, but it brought us more closer together. And, and it bought us that way we know what we want to do. And, and we wanted to build another church. And so, like I said, after we tore it down, we went up there to the bank and talked with the people at the bank. And by the grace of God, they allowed us to borrow the money to build this church. And we thank God for that. And after the building of the church, we had the dedication of the church. Like Reverend Women Page was still pastoring here when we marched into this church here. And we had the dedication and the dedication of the cornerstone of that church called the old church was, uh, was 1946 and when it was a bill. And like I said, we could, you could look up, sit in the front up here and look in the back. And sometimes you can look out the, back, out the door through the cracks. That's just how bad it was. But God had kept us through that though. And we never gave up and never lost our will for God or to move on. And I thank God for that. And, and, and as we move into this church here, it did not change us. We still serve God the same way, giving God the glory and putting him first in our life. Well, we, we have a good revival every year. The pastor has made a commitment to ask a minister out of Mobile County. Uh, he's talented with spiritual gifts, expound on the word of God, and has a great singing voice. He can sing that draws people to Christ. He's been doing that since the pastor been the pastor been pastor here, and people from as far off as Atmore, Mobile, Eliska, Ura, At Atmore, as even as far south as Foley comes out with revivals. I believe this church is a church on the move. Uh, I've seen members come in. I participated in baptism at this church. And every opportunity I 
can and I have, I, I reach out to help the pastor in trying to bring back our members of our Christian fold that may have drifted away, you know. I can remember very vividly one Sunday right here when the then pastor, Reverend William Paddy, was preaching. And he was preaching out of his soul. I could feel the unction of the Holy Spirit, but it appeared to me that the congregation was just sitting, listening. And I got the opportunity, I asked him, why are you sitting so quietly? A man preaching out of his soul, at least you could witness him. And uh, it wasn't long after that that he offered his resignation and appointed Reverend Robert Brown to be the pastor. Reverend Padgett, um, his help began to fail him. And during that time, the Lord has called me into the ministry. And I accepted my calling in, into the ministry 2002 when I accepted my calling into the ministry. And I was on his leadership and he was training me in the leadership in the ministry. He was training me here. And I thank God for that. And then after that, there, his help began to fail him. Well, he wasn't able to come up here like he wanted to. And so he asked me sometimes to take over the service. And I would take over the service sometimes. Sometimes it'd be months that I'd take over the service because his help was failing. And then one day we had a meeting and he came to the meeting and he decided to resign as pastor at that time. And then which is all that we all knew that his help was failing him, but he was our pastor. And we really didn't want that, but God knows best and God knows what he needs. And during that time when he resigned as pastor, he asked the church, would they let me step in until they find a pastor? But by the grace of God, the church came together and said, well, pastor, we don't have to look for a pastor. God have already sent us a pastor and gave us a pastor. And they asked me what I take in, take as leadership as pastor here at Mount Trial. And I told them it would be an honor for me to do that. And I thank God for that. And as I've been here, God had really been moving in Mount Traum. I mean, God had been adding to the church and, and he had been doing a lot of wonderful work around here through me and through the ministry that God had called me into. And I thank God for that because I realized that I realized that God placed me here for a reason. And I also want to remember about when I got baptized, too. When I got baptized, we didn't have a baptism pool here. We went up there to the, uh, the creek at about a mile and a half, about a mile and a half from here, Little River Creek. And we all would dress up in our white and we would march down there to the creek. When we drove up there, we would march down there to the creek. And the pastor would be standing out there in the water. I remember he would be standing out there in the water. And then the members, they would all be in their white too. And we would walk down the path there into the water. And then the pastor would baptize us into the water. And then we would come up and come off. And sometimes we would come back to the house, the church house, and change. But sometimes we would change out there. Because, you know, you don't want to get in your car and wet your seats and stuff up. So we would, would do that there. And then we would come back here and we would get the right hand of fellowship. Here, it was just an awesome time how we used to do it now than now than, than what we used to when we have a baptism pool now. And by having a baptism pool, it's a plus to the church, too. Because... Back then, now that water was cold in the wintertime going being baptized. It felt good in the summertime now, but in the wintertime, it was cold. It was cold, but now we have a baptism pool with heated water and everything. And since I've been here, I have baptized several people, several members of the church here at Mount Trown. A lot of the youth have been baptized back then. I have baptized some of the adults here at Mount Trown, and it's just a blessing to be a pastor here at Mount Trout and just to know the history, how far God had bought Mount Trout a long ways. Cause sometimes I think about how far God has bought us. Cause I, I look back sometime and I remember when the road was like, was just a dust, was a dirt road. And well now the road is paid coming into the church. Sometimes there was mud holes out there that you had to kind of walk through and it, it everything. But now it's paid and everything. That just let us know how far God had bought us and, and from the history if we look back how 
Mount Tron was in today and we look forward to where God is going to carry us because God is not through with us yet. He still has more things for us to do here. And as I was talking about the baptism pool, like I said, it's a blessing there because we have a heated pool now. And now when I go and take someone down in the water, it can be in the summertime, it can be in the wintertime. You see, we don't have to wait no more until, because a lot of times we will say, well, let's wait until the to uh, warmer weather because we don't want nobody to catch a cold now. And so we will wait, but now we don't have to do that there. And it really had been in a joy of a time because I remember like we would go to baptism, we had to find a deeper spot to baptize them because sometimes the water is too shallow. We would have to dig a hole and baptize them in. And it just let us know how time has changed and how full God has brought us. And also as I look forward to the future, I just believe that God is going to carry us a little bit further than where we are today. And I believe that as long as the church is following God, that we will see magnificent thing that God is going to do for the church. And not only for this church, but also for the community in the area here. Yes, we may not be large in numbers, but we're large in heart for the Lord. And we do all that we can for the Lord. And I just believe that God is going to carry us a little bit forward spiritually in the church. And, and what I'm talking about spiritually, that we learn more about God, more about what he want us and what he want for us and what he expect us to do. Because as I, as I look forward to the church here at Mount Trown, I can see the church is one of the future church that somebody can go to and get released and get help. You see, we, we may not have a, a food bank right now, but we're working on some thing that we're working on for the church. There's a lot of um, things that we want to do for the church, but we're, we're working forward towards that. You see, because I remember the time when we didn't even have a van, but God had blessed us with a van, that we had to pick up people in our cars and we'd be going to a nerdy cage engagement. We had to pick up people in our cars and take them with us. But now God has blessed us with a van that we are able to go around and pick up the um, members or the members meet up here at the church. And we all can go together. And I just see God in the future is going to bless us even more than just with one van, but more van. Because the future I look for Mount Trown is that not only that more members will join Mount Trown, but Mount Trown will be a beacon in the neighborhood. That it would be more of a neighborhood church than it is today. And that's one of the goals and one of the light, the beacon that I see for Mount Trown, that God has for Mount Trown.